Fabs, you mentioned uh, at the top of the show, Antonio Gates, your number one target earlier, and certainly a great replacement for Greg Olson or Jordan Cameron. But let's talk running backs. If you got Adrian Peterson to fill in uh, here for week five. Well, uh, I, I guess we were all wrong on C.J. Anderson. At least I was. I know that for sure. And Ronnie Hillman's been the better back. And I was surprised to learn that he's available in over 70% of NFL.com leagues right now. I mean, that is amazing, guys. Go out and pick him up. Now, he had that big run last week against the Minnesota Vikings, and That's I said right. on yesterday's show that not only was that run on a route to the end zone, but also on a route to the top spot on the depth chart That's in right. Denver. I would play him this week over C.J. Anderson, who I would bench That's against. Right. The Raiders. Oh my I'm gosh, just upset Ronnie. that you're trying to Come include on, Akbar man. and I in your C.J. Anderson <laughs> bad prediction. Don't you group us into that. He's got the San Diego State thing, and I never yeah. liked C.J. Anderson in the first oh place. Well, 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 I look, said we, meaning me. <laughs> well, look, you were talking about, you know, riding the pine. I tell you, one guy that needs to be riding the time and shouldn't be getting any time, it's Roddy White. It's because Leonard Hankerson has really taken over. Hey, you like that money. Go ahead and say you like it. I was trying like to it. sort out that rhyme, and I'm still confused. <laughs> <laughs> the time well, and the pine Anderson, and the time. If you look at what he did a couple of weeks ago against the Giants, 11 targets, he brought home a touchdown. Last week, he had six targets. This week, or this past week, he had eight targets, and so he's being targeted a ton outside of Julio Jones. I think this is a guy that you need to pick up, look at the name, own him. Well, this one is more of a pickup and stash. It's Ted Ginn. The Panthers are on a bye this week, so if you have a lower waiver wire pri uh, priority, if you've got some wide receivers, this is a guy you might want to look at because there are buys coming up for some of the big names like Julio Jones and Antonio Brown. Ted Ginn, second on this team in targets, and so far this season, he scored more fantasy points than guys we expected to have big years, guys like Jordan Matthews and Jarvis Landry and Brandon Cooks. Ted Ginn, believe it or not, is the 24th ranked wide receiver in all of fantasy football. That so if you have, yep. you have space wow. to go stash him, this is the guy to go stash. I played him last week, carried me to victory. Tavon Austin, with the arrival of Todd Gurley, you are now seeing this St. Louis offense open up. And there certainly is a connection between Nick Foles and Tavon Austin. And he can do it in myriad ways. You see here catching the deep ball. They're running fly sweeps out of the backfield for him. You see it right there. And once Gurley begins to do his damage, like many of us think he's going to do, these opportunities are going to become more frequent for Tavon Austin. You see that 6%. So I guess speaking to what you were just talking about, Marcus, if you have a lower priority on the waiver wire, this is someone I would absolutely target. Fabs, let's uh, go another receiver. Let's keep with the uh, receiver position here. Who do, you, who do you like? Yeah, the Allen that we talked about in Jacksonville a lot was Allen Robinson. Yeah. But yeah. Allen Hearns has actually been more productive over the last couple of weeks. 30.6 fantasy points in his last two games, including two touchdowns. Last week, 11 catches. So, Lake Bortles certainly has Google eyes for Alan Hearns, who now needs to be added in all leagues across the board. They're playing the Buccaneers this week, so Hearns is a viable three slash flex, especially when you consider, like Money said, four teams are on a bye. Well, a, another guy that's getting a ton of targets to me, well, maybe not a ton, but he's getting his, his share of targets, is Owen Daniels. Owen Daniels, with Peyton Manning being back to form and getting back into his thing, now he's in that shotgun position. He's looking at Owen Daniels. He's got two receiving touchdowns in the last two games. And so when you look at that, you go, wow, like, I have to have this, especially when you're looking at the tight end position. Owen Daniels? Get well, they're playing the Raiders this there week, too. Yeah. The Raiders have never met a tight end that they could cover, at least not right. this year. Right, exactly. Uh, I'm looking at Chris Thompson, and we've been talking about how to figure out this Washington backfield for a couple of weeks. I said two I weeks can. ago that Thompson was the guy you should really be worried about if you had Alfred Morris. And you look, he's playing more and more snaps. But on top of it, look at the matchup this week against Atlanta. Pass catching running backs against the Falcons. Darren Sproles, seven catches, 76 yards. Shane Vereen, eight catches, 76 yards. Lance Dunbar, 10 catches for 100 yards. Chris Thompson catches the ball out of the backfield, and he could be poised for a huge day, especially if you're playing in PPR leagues or DFS leagues. Well, I'll stick with the running back position, and unless you think Isaiah Crowell has the running back spot on lockdown for the Cleveland Browns, uh, you're going to want to go grab Duke Johnson because, you see, a lot of it was targets and being able to catch the ball out of the backfield. That is a monster number for Duke Johnson and really his first extended action. We saw it in the preseason. We heard the buzz coming out of Cleveland on the banks of Lake Erie that Duke Johnson would ultimately be the running back he wanted to own. And uh, he's going to be the back you want to own as the season progresses. They like to run the ball. They like these high opportunity completions. And Duke can take the top off if he's got a linebacker in coverage. So absolutely go pick him up. Fabs. Here's your top waiver wire targets, and Duke's right there at number two. And he went to the U. You know a lot of running backs who have been very successful in the NFL have attended Miami. 
I got Hillman on there, Leonard Hankerson. Forget about Roddy White and don't try to trade him to people, uh, Akbar, nah, okay. because he's got no value at all. Kick, Blake kick. Bortles has been solid over the last three weeks. Tavon Austin and Owen Daniels, although Owen Daniels is like a one-week pickup and drop because he's playing yeah. the Raiders. Yeah. Can, can I gloat for a little bit? Gloat? I have Antonio Gates. I have okay. Antonio <laughs> Gates. I have Antonio Gates. You want Gates. to do it one more time? I have Antonio Gates. Okay. <laughs>